So good morning. How are you, Kylie Hutchinson? Nice to see you. You too, Julie. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you very much. So um, we're just having these little quick conversations so that people can get to know uh, the Hunter doulas, but also, you know, what doulas do in general, because we think they're pretty fabulous. So I think a great way for the public to know about doulas and who we are and what we do is to basically talk to the people that do the work and so people can get a bit of a feel for what it is that we do. So, so Kylie is um, an end-of-life doula and she's also a support worker. So she basically works in the community, um, you know, could be under like fee-for-service or with aged care funding or with NDIS funding, just depends on the client. And, um, and so we're all pretty flexible as doulas. So welcome, Kylie. And first thing I'd love to ask and ask you about is what geographical area do you work in so that people have got an idea of, you know, what, what area you cover? Uh, I live at Spears Point, so I kind of cover that top end of Lake Macquarie, bottom end of Newcastle. Great. Yeah. Okay. So really all of Newcastle, Lake Macquarie, you pretty much probably yep. cover. Great. All right. So why did you decide to be an end-of-life doula? Like it, it's such a an unusual thing that a lot of people really haven't heard about. So why did you decide to do that training and, and do the work that you do? Um, when I found out what it was, I think it was five or six years ago now, uh, I found out what it was and went, oh, that's a thing. I've been doing that my whole life. Mm. Um, you know, it was something that I had been around death and dying. Um, my family, you know, we had elderly relatives that we were just all about, okay, they might die soon you've got to spend time with them yeah not a lot of families do that but my family was like yeah 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 we're, we're gonna have to do this um so yeah it was just we were around it uh I'm very comfortable around it um I'd experienced over the years sudden loss um you know some interesting situations um I worked in hospitality for a long time so I had old boys at the pub that had died and um yeah, and sort of saw that community gathering around them and then a few years ago found out that that was what I'd been doing. Mm. So I thought, well, I'd better go and get the training in that. <laughs> Very good. It isn't it great that there is some training? I yeah. think that's fabulous. All right, so when you think about um, the current model of support in the community around end of life, you know, in-home, aged care, all of those type of things, do you think there's anything that's missing at the moment? Like even if you think about hospitals, all of those environments, like in terms of end-of-life care and support, what do you think is missing? Um, <clears throat> I think that when people start to, like when they go to hospital, it's all about, right, we can do this and we can save your life and we can do this. And then the weighing up, what I've seen in my experience, is the weighing up of quality of life versus continuation of medical treatment versus end of life care nobody ever really fleshes that out and says this is what it's going to look like you sort of get to a point where they go oh all right now there's nothing more we can do to keep you alive and refer you to palliative and and I always say palliative care has the worst marketing mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone goes oh that's it I've got days and it's like no I've got clients that have been under palliative care for two years you know like they do symptom management they have these conversations all the time they're constantly weighing up all of these options um and but that's not well known and I think that's what I found is my niche is sort of going hang on let's just really let's talk about it this is what you really want yeah I so agree with that because I think palliative care do an absolutely amazing Incredible. beautiful job but the community really does think you hear the word palliative and you think oh my god I'm going to be dead soon but people can be palliative as for a decade because yep. it really is just about symptom management and it's just I agree with you it's just a, it's education that we need to do of the public that that doesn't mean you're going to be dead within the next six weeks it might mean that but it doesn't necessarily mean that. So, yeah, good point. So what special skills do you and experience do you do you bring to the role of end-of-life doula? So, you know, if somebody wanted to engage you, what are you bringing, you know, to, to make it rich, a rich experience? Um, I always say if I do my job right, you won't need me. Yeah. 
you know, if I do my job right, you won't need me there. You'll be comfortable. You'll be confident. You'll have everything in place. Everything will be explained the way you need and you'll be fine. And you'll be able for yourself to be able to find those moments of beauty that I point out and say, beautiful. well, we can make this beautiful. We can do this little thing. Um, yeah. And, and, the, and I advocate really heavily for, you know, do they understand this? Is this what they really want to do? Is everyone on the same page? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of deep, in-depth conversation there, presenting options, choices, and just helping people come up with their version of what's right for them. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. All right. So when you think about um, the challenges in Australia at the moment, particularly around the ageing population, what, what do you think are the biggest challenges? Like if you think about the next 20 to 30 years, in Australia with the with the ageing baby boomers, of which I'm one, what do you think are the biggest challenges that we face? Um, in my experience, I have found that this, I say this all the time to clients, um, you're trying to deal with a system that is broken and it is designed to break whoever tries to play with it. It is complicated. It is long-winded. People get up, don't understand. You've got baby boomers who don't do technology and they're like, oh, you've got to ring this and press one for this and do for that. And somebody will come out and then they'll say, oh, we can do it over the phone. You know, you've got baby boomers who don't do technology. Some are amazing. I'm not saying everyone, but you've got that population that is trying to learn a new skill on top of understand the system. Um, and so they end up throwing their hands in the air and saying, oh, I'm not going to. It's too mm. hard. Mm. And, and then uh, because they miss out then on vital yeah. information. So they miss out on information. Mm. They miss out on services. They miss out on the things that they can get. And I say, baby, you guys have paid the most tax. Mm. Like, <laughs> this is how you get your tax back. Yeah, You've paid all these years. These are the ones that have really done this. So this is how you get it back. But, you know, you have to do this and have to do that. And yeah. You, Little things, you know, they go, oh, I need an aged care assessment. And, and you know, I'm coming to you from my mother's sewing room, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and mum just said to me, oh, your dad's got a physiotherapist coming out next week. Why does he need that? And I was like, well, that's part of the assessment. You know? mm, yeah, yeah, I understand. Like they don't understand why they need to have these things. So then they just, by accident, yep. get things. Yeah, yeah. Get the help that they need. Mm. And then sometimes what I always worry about is people miss out on something that could have been had a massive impact mm. on their life for, for months, years yeah. even, because yeah. they didn't know. They didn't know who to ask. They didn't even know it existed. So, and that, yeah. They're yeah, really they important. They know it existed. And, you know, I'm saying to people constantly, no, you're not the first one to have this situation. Mm. Somebody else would have had something, got it done, sorted it out. Um, and so, you know, you're not the only one, but they don't share information like the younger generation shares. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Beautiful point. So if you're in a circumstance where, and I imagine this has happened to you on many occasions where you're working with, um, a client and their family and they've got very differing opinions so you know I mean I've even certainly as a nurse seen people arguing arguing in an aged care facility over if someone was going to be cremated or buried like but it you know and it's I always amazes me that the that we get to this point before there's any conversation about things but if you can see really big differences of opinion between what the client wants and what the family wants or what some people in the family want and some don't how do you manage that and how do you navigate that it's a fun challenge um yeah I literally had this on the week uh, last week I had a client that ended up in hospital uh and I I found him semi-conscious at his home um rang an ambulance rang his daughter got everything was waiting at hospital um he was you know sort of to come good we think he had a, a seizure overnight mm -hmm. to get out of bed um so in, in hospital, you know, this doctor comes around and they said, we just need to know he's 85, he's limited mobility. We just need to know, do you want us to do CPR? Mm. And he said, no, I'm done. Let me die. And I've got nothing to live for. And the daughter burst into tears and was like, dad, dad, you've got me. Yes, do CPR. And he was like, no. And I was like, right, we're going for a coffee. Yeah. I was like, we don't have to make a decision right now. Thank you, doctor. We will get back to you on this. 
and we're going to go and get a cup of coffee. Yeah. And then I walked out with her and said, okay, I get what you're saying, but let's have a talk about what this looks like. Mm. This is how it's going to look. This is the chance of recovery. There'll be broken ribs. There'll be burn marks on him. It's not like in the movies. The success rate is quite low, uh, very low. I'm not going to give, but low, low. Like it's, and you know, how, if this is it, is this how you want it to look? Yeah. And is it what he wants? Yeah. And I think that's the key. I mean, yeah. I'm to me, I think it's so important to empower our elderly yeah. people. And and you just see it, particularly in this ageing, elder, end of life sort of stage that you see this the power just slipping away and mm. being given to others. And, and again, I wouldn't want that for me. I'd want to be able to, as long as I had a had a say, I'd want to be heard. Um, yeah. But that's a common thing. Is but but you understand the heightened emotion around it, the fear, you know, all of that. And it's again, it's that it's bringing that to the place of okay, okay let's sit down and talk, and make sure the person's heard. And does everybody understand the consequences? And um, and I totally agree with you. You know, it's just it's about conversation and reality. Beautiful. And it went. Yeah. Really, I mean, in the end, she was crying and she said, I get what you're saying. And yeah. I, I, she said, I won't do it. Yeah, that, because obviously, you know, the fact that he, in his circumstances, he was done. He just didn't yeah. feel his quality of life was there. So yeah. that makes I sense, think, doesn't it? He yeah. has come home and it didn't happen. So yeah, great. But at least there, I think that's a conversation yeah. that later on, yes, yeah. have to have that. But these are little conversations that we have got to have all yeah. the way. Totally agree. Totally agree. So when you think about what doulas do, like I suppose I want you to come up with three words that you think are, are the biggest things that uh, that doulas do or doulas provide, whatever you want, but just three words, key words. Uh, the first one is a reality check. That's what I do. Uh, and, it's, and it's like, hang on, uh, is this, has everyone checked has so everyone checked in with everyone yeah we all checked in um I think navigation is another one it's a complex system and you like we said before you can accidentally say no to something that shuts down a pathway for the thing that you need because it's so medical system is so set um and love mm, that's lovely yeah, I agree. Because, you know, that what a great space for end of life to be in as a loving space. And, I mean, and if a doula can create that beautiful heart-centred space around people, like what a gift, you know. And, again, people want that, but obviously sometimes they just need a little bit of love and support and care and guidance just to, just to get them there so that everybody feels, okay, this is okay, this is normal, this is what happens and we're all here and we're all together. I mean, what a gift that is, you know, so that's beautiful. All right, so this is a little bit of a challenging question, but nonetheless, you know, if, if you think about your own end of life scenario and you could create that for yourself, what would that look like? Oh, it's not challenging, I know. I have said uh, there'll be, you know, I, I'd say it all the time, there'll be a group of people around me, they'll all be drinking wine, I will have wine. There'll be some really hot guy with no shirt on who's massaging my feet. <laughs> and, and, and it will be a um, relaxing, calm, you know, nice little vibe about it. Um, and then I said, when I die, everyone has to cry. Everyone better be crying. You better cry <laughs> when I die. Yeah. And where are you when this is happening? You at home? Oh, yeah, at home. At, at home. home. Yeah. yeah, in yeah. the lounge room because I will be centre of attention. I won't be in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's beautiful, isn't it? But just imagine if everybody could just with that lightheartedness at some point yeah. in their life just say this would be this would be lovely, you know. I mean, it was interesting uh, just as, as a little takeaway there, um, when my son was in primary school, they must have got or high school, might have been early high school, they got them to write something about um, you know, what what their life, to reflect on their life as an older person. And I can remember I reading what my son had written and, and what he wrote was to be an old man that dies at home in my bed 
feeling happy. And I thought, oh my God, like that was a, he was only 12 or 13 or something when I read that. It's probably still in my little case inside with things in it. But it was just such an insightful thing for such a young person to actually write. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I mean, I, th- I would wish that for everybody, whatever their version of that is, you know, to be able to die happy in, in, a, in, in an environment where you are happy, you know, yeah. I mean, that just sounds beautiful. All right, Kylie, well, thank you so much for today. Now, um, if anybody wants to connect with Kylie, um, you can get her through uh, Doula Connections, which is www.doulaconnections.com.au. And if they wanted to contact you through your business, have you got a, an email or a website that you'd prefer people to get you? Uh, yeah, so um, I run Death Doula Services. So you can get me on that, www.deathdoulaservices.com.au. Uh, and my and my email is on there. It's info at. Beautiful. All right. Thank you so much. And um, I just have a great day. And that was a great convo. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you.